it should be making a video. I don't know why that didn't go away, but whatever. Uh, internet. Uh, so I thought I'd do a comment video on somebody else's comments, right? So this, um, forgot his name already, Bald Cats guy. Uh, this is 469 comments. Incredible. You know, for kind of a trivial video in a lot of ways. Didn't really get to anything. It didn't even get to it in a very scientific way. <laughs> and, um, but anyway, so I thought I'd read some of these. Um, you know, maybe some of these people will, uh, be willing to debunk something a little more challenging, you know, than people proposing, um, you know, something before Christopher Columbus kind of knowledge, you know, flat earth kind of crap. I mean, it's just kind of funny when you think about it. There's, they're wasting all this energy debunking flat earth. Yeah. Amazing. Anyway, um, waste of time. Too many provable facts for fluffers for, to wrap their tiny minds around. And again, you've wrapped your mind around things. You know, these people are just so arrogant. Um, you know, they have these silly explanations. Again, quantum mechanics and then, you know, Einstein's bent space. Doesn't, can't mesh the things together. <laughs> Doesn't really work at all. Um, you know, the state of conventional physics is just complete mush chaos. They got, a, a you know, 128 different little mechanisms that are supposed to be doing something. Um, you know, lost in mush. Uh, just invent crap like dark matter and dark energy, just inventions, uh, multiverses, uh, you know, and you're talking about how you, your minds are somehow gripping something real. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think so. Reaction, ignore, use makeup, uh, use made up shit, like you guys don't do that. Cry, shill, and block. It's exactly what conventional physics does. Again, show me the message board where I can challenge any conventional notions of the standard model. They won't allow you to challenge any of it. As soon as you, you open your mouth, they shut you up. So, just bullshit. Uh, thumbs up from you, me. Well, that's because you're kind of a trivial, <laughs> you have a trivial understanding of acceleration then. Look, the guy doesn't say anything. He the video is titled Acceleration. It doesn't say a damn thing about what acceleration is. So you have like all the different examples. You got like the Newton's Cradle example. Okay, this, the hard masses. Now clearly momentum is in the thing that's moving and it hits the other thing and it doesn't move. And then the thing next to it doesn't move and the thing next to it doesn't move. And somehow the thing on the end knows I can move, <laughs> all right? But clearly the thing, momentum, is clearly something that's transferred from one end to the other end of the cradle, right? I mean like electricity or something, it travels right through, okay, a bunch of material. It gives them a kind of momentum in the sense that it's, it's, you know, a tiny bit of movement. And that tiny bit is enough to say, I've gotten rid of it. I gave you, I moved fast enough <laughs> to encompass all of the force, the momentum, and I gave it to my neighbor. Now it's his problem. I blew the leaves from my yard into his yard. And then the next guy blew the leaves into the next guy's yard. <laughs> and that's just all that happens is you just transfer it from one place to another. And then the other thing that leaves, obviously leaves because it's changed. It now has different properties. It's not the same ball it was when it was sitting there all by itself saying I'm just fine. And all of a sudden it's moving. Now you people think that what? Somehow it hasn't changed, that somehow it doesn't possess anything. No, it has to possess something. It's changed. It's materially changed. And the, the process of acceleration in that system almost doesn't exist. It's just kind of a pure transfer of velocity for velocity. And acceleration doesn't have much to do with it because the transfer is clean. The transfer is all subatomic. So unlike two bodies having to collide with each other or unlike shooting a bunch of fire out of the back end you know to shoot your rocket into space the transfer that the, the idea of changing the objects uh, disposition isn't as simple as just taking a steel ball and hitting the shuttle you know just steel ball boom and it just takes off well you can't get the energy into the shuttle the same way 
you have to do it less efficiently. You have to change all the atoms inside of it uh, with a little more work, and that's why we see it as acceleration. We don't see it as an instant transfer of velocity. We can't just create a big spring and you know, spring the shuttle. Well, even that would be a, a transition uh, in terms of you'd start off slow and work your way up to uh, full speed. So clearly things have to absorb force, I think. And to have a conversation about acceleration without talking about that this is actually something, something possesses. It has a disposition. It owns its momentum. Its momentum is what it is. It's, it's in there. And if we had a, a viewer, you know, some device to see momentum with, we could see the momentum. We could see the velocity built into the way the atoms are structured and the tension between the pieces. And again, this can be illustrated by the fact that these rules aren't true for subatomic particles, like electrons and protons. On their own, they can't maintain this condition. They can just be pushed in the system. They don't keep what they get. And um, so there's something else going on that you have to kind of understand that velocity that's maintainable is something a complex piece of matter does, not a simple piece of matter. So anyway, you know, just saying that the, you know, these people are so arrogant and they're talking from a position that is so under, uh, undercooked. You know, their, their understanding of the real physics is still fetal, you know, and they're insulting other malformed uh, objects <laughs> you know so um, all right velocity equals distance over time so this guy's making the same point I was making that he shouldn't have used the word speed so don't get capital S and lowercase s so I guess he's I should have just said don't use the word speed acceleration is dv over dt which I guess is change in velocity over change in time um, and not t and then the units as like joules squared or something, I don't know, to the minus one. I don't know what the, the frick that would be. Uh, I know I have heard mathematicians joke about physicists' abuse of notation, but this is absurd. Yes, his, he wasn't very precise in his math. Uh, I like it. Short answer. Sweet. Plus, I think these explanations are really needed. Yeah, well, if they're wrong, then you think people need to get wrong answers? I don't know. It's, I mean, if they're really underdone, and isn't it really underdone? Um, if you're going to talk about acceleration, not to talk about what it really is, which is, well, first it's a change, exclusively just changing. Um, but clearly we understand it as a, an added thing. We don't think of it as a subtraction, but that's all that deceleration really is, is just a change and you already have a positive momentum in one direction and you gain uh, uh, some of that is subtracted um, quitter shoo Critters. anyway <laughs> um, uh, um, yeah so uh, specifically for our confused and misinformed flat earther friends right so uh, flat Earth is, like I said, it, I, I, I bet you that if these people stopped watching the Flat Earth videos, that the Flat Earth videos would have like 10% of the views they have. But that's how kind of stupid this is. That there, If you really went out and surveyed people, the number of people who believe in a Flat Earth, what is it going to be the, the same percentages of the people who believe what? You know? <laughs> I, look, there's people who believe in angels. I mean, there's people who believe all kinds of nonsense. But, you know, why is this nonsense so important? You know, and especially, again, coming from a position where their physics is so weak. Uh, the way to think about it is key. So, and these people all have these dopey names. I don't know, Gary Ford DLC. I don't know what that means, but at least he has the right name. Psycho Muffin. I mean... What's the, what's the, how do you have credibility with a name like Psycho Muffin? The way I think about it is key is accelerating downward. 
like direction makes a difference okay it's just there is a scale in the way putting it back up pu pu pushing it back up right so this is the whole point though what's the consequence of that what is really happening then is that you accelerate then you have to decelerate in terms of changing your direction you're stopped by something so that means that your acceleration in one direction has to now be uh, destroyed your velocity in one direction so you have velocity in a direction yeah you, you, you're sitting here on earth things are being moved down they dent the earth the earth pushes back and it moves things back up right so technically inside of you there has to be stuff the same stuff between the kinetic balls the same transfer is taking place stuff inside of you is moving down and stuff inside of you is moving back up again so you know it ends up being a bit circular but the point of that circle is that it really means that stuff is moving up and down constantly <laughs> okay so you're essentially vibrating in the space which again explains why gravity is increasing your velocity is because you are aliasing on the surface of the earth uh, another way to think Let's see, let's go, let's go, okay. Um, negating the downward motion. Another way to think is driving a car. Yeah, a good way to think about it is driving a car in the sense that you understand that whatever force you put into the car, you accelerate the car by putting energy, you know, doing the energy thing, the friction with the ground, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, you push stuff that way um, to go that way. And the amount of force you pushed that way will be the same amount of force that you're going that's now in the car in the sense that if you hit a brick wall now the car will do exactly what you did putting this energy into the car so by putting energy into the ground you put energy into the car in terms of a bias and that's all we're talking about is biases we're just talking about you have more stuff going in one way than you have going another way and that's all it is it's just a change in how much is, it's you have in dimensionally equal pressure or you have dimensionally unequal pressure so you create unequal pressure in the ground you create an opposite unequal pressure in the car and when it hits the wall it's going to release that unequal pressure all right another way to drive a car I can provide a constant amount of gas which can be thought of as a constant force well, it's not constant, but whatever. Thus, when a, thus when at stop, the gas will accelerate the car. So not very, nice, you know, but there will be a point that air friction, rolling friction. So again, this friction isn't really part of the uh, explanation of the video. And the other energy losses inside the engine will increase as it speeds up until you get to the point where these forces cancel out any additional forces propelling it forward. Uh, yes, terminal velocity. Thus, the car is accelerating forward, but there are forces canceling out additional movement. Yeah, so you're again back to that point where you're just moving back and forth. You know. So once you get to that terminal velocity, you're still being pushed faster but you can't maintain it because something else is the rest of the stuff is pushing you back thus it moves at a constant rate <clears throat> uh, but it's not constant in the sense that you have to count that vibration as something the vibration is not nothing is this a correct way to think about these things no uh, I feel efforts can't think uh, in these terms so again you know I don't think you you're, you're sitting here is this you're asking the question so here you are you don't really know the answers you're, you're kind of saying right now you're saying it pretty clear you don't know the right answer you think this a guy does I guess that's why you're asking him I suppose um, and again you're being this harshly critical of people who don't have much confidence in uh, the standard model and uh, you know and I, I would say clearly like I said that, that these are the worst form. These are the these are dissidents who are dissident just to be obnoxious. They don't. There's there's nobody who, who's honest can look at the evidence and be a flat earther. Come on, uh, you know, a, 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 
a millions of people conspiracy. I mean, everybody who ever looked at any satellite data or built a satellite or worked on any of this stuff, they're all liars. I mean, it's a preposterous conspiracy theory. We've seen the pictures from space. I mean, to say all of that is a fake is an insanely, it's not a reasonable theory. It's an unreasonable theory, plainly. And only somebody bent on clinging to some, I just want to be an asshole, would argue in defense of it. Like I said, even if you don't bother with the physics, you just bother with the, what does the conspiracy require? It's an insanely un impractical conspiracy. BC, it's actually BS, but okay. <laughs> this video any, anyway, baldy shorts. Uh, thank you for your hard work. It was, it was kind of sloppy work, actually. I love what you do. I know the earth is not flat, but I struggle with mass science. You break it down in a way that I'm able to get my head around it. Thanks. So I, I think this is just so Kiwi shit lord. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's stupid names. Uh, I mean, a retarded statement. He didn't He didn't even do it math that made any sense. He actually had a period where he said, well, and that's uh, velocity squared. And then he says, and that's velocity <laughs> squared. It's, it's, it's the same thing twice. I mean, but anyway. Um, hi, Baldy Cats. I have an answer for math, blah, blah, debate, chan, blah, blah, whatever. Gas pressure without a container question. Simple. An airplane wing makes... Wow, now, see, airplane wings are... It's a whole complex pile of shit. Make out of a piece of paper. Blow on top of the wing and you cause lift by creating area of low pressure above the, the wing. Simply as the pressure without container. Well, there is a container, so isn't that kind of silly? I mean, obviously we're in a container. The atmosphere is being pushed down by gravity like everything else. And through that process, it's denser at the bottom than it is at the top. <laughs> it's clearly a container. And clearly the wing doesn't do any, doesn't do very good once you get to a certain altitude. The, the wing gets kind of shitty. Uh, this would be a good baldy short. Well, I mean, the simple answer for that one is, is yeah, no, there's no short answer to... Uh, buoyancy and lift. Yeah, Puckett is a complete moron, and I enjoyed the short video. More of the same, please. So you enjoy just kind of simple, um, incomplete, uh, not entirely accurate physics. Okay. Uh, yes, like this format. Uh, the tighter the... whatever this factual focus, the less the conspiracy types have to argue. So again, what was the tight focus? I mean, he, he sort of was unfair to the flat earther guy in the sense that the flat earther guy obviously has a theory that it's electricity. And I don't know why you people aren't picking on the electric universe, which I think has a lot more intelligent people in it than the flat earth community. Uh, but they're basically believing in the same thing in the sense that they think gravity is some kind of electrical phenomenon. And clearly the flat earthers are obviously arguing that gravity is electric. And of course, it doesn't stretch their limited attention spans too much. So, I mean, he did quote mine the guy in the sense that the, clearly the guy's argument is, is that it's a voltage thing because he thinks the earth is a zero, you know, in terms of its voltage. And it's obviously not a zero it's a midpoint between a real zero and a positive voltage and we created a ground so we can do the negative thing and the positive thing. Um, the ground is actually uh, a very positive temperature. So if you thought of it as temperature, the earth is a temperature. It's a mean temperature. So if the temperature went from zero to 500, the earth we would think of it as like a 250 degrees. So you can have things that are higher temperature than the Earth, and you can have things that are lower temperature than the Earth. But the Earth is the ground. It's not zero voltage. It's actually at a voltage. We're actually, it is sort of the electric universe in that sense, that the Earth is at a voltage. And the voltage is essentially consistent with kind of like a temperature. Um, so then there's my uh, 
let's see, I like this format, yes, okay, we did that. Uh, so I posted a link to, to uh, my response video. The problem with comments too, you know, you, you have to forcibly change the default. The default is to put all the, the little smiley faced hearted things first, you know, and so comment sections are just such a lie, you know, because they're not in any kind of fair order. They're in a very <laughs> contrived order. Um, and so that's really kind of bogus. Uh, that's a really odd argument, Pooh Ticket. Even if his own standards of logic, he says the key isn't acceleration, therefore it's not a real force. And yeah, what he's saying is is that there's not something. Um, again, his argument is it's electric charge. Unlike him pushing down with his hand, which er, isn't accelerating either. Well, it sort of is. I mean, you have to accelerate your hand to give it velocity. You know, it does take time to move your hand. So that, again, the, the process always requires that every little atom has to be moved. And you, you people think they all just move for, because somebody yells here, move, and they all hear the yell? What exactly do you think is moving everything? The only way things move is that one atom has to push against another atom, or more specifically, one electron has to push against another electron. So there's a little squiggly force between it, right? Electron, little squiggly force, little, another electron. And a little squiggly force is actually a photon, but whatever. It's actually the energy. And as they get closer together, there's more energy, there's more bounces between them. And so that's how it's conveyed through the material. But it all has to happen. And yeah, we're, you know, we're, our frame rate is so much lower than the universe's. You know, billions and billions and trillions and trillions of times slower than the rate the universe is working at. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of billion years of processes are taking place inside the finger as I'm moving it. And all of those processes have to do with this transfer of pressure between little nuclear bits. Every electron and every proton has to have their pressure environment altered for them to move. Every single one. All right. One thing I never understood is that if e, F equals ma, the object moving at the constant speed, a equals zero, <laughs> you know, well, it doesn't have to be moving at all. So again, this this perception that there's, you know, that everything has to be moving. No, there can't could possibly be something that's absolutely not moving, would have no force. Is that correct? No, it's about balance and pressure, and that's all it ever is. So again, it's like the argument about the Earth being a ground. It's you know that's what makes it relative. You say, okay, there's stuff that's moving uh, this much, and there's stuff that's moving this much, and then there's stuff that's moving this much, and that's how you have to sort of think about it. Is that everything has a velocity or a momentum, and you can make relative comparisons between their velocities and momentums. Uh, but there's always force acting on them. It just has to do with the imbalance in the force. So the electron that moves in my finger, as my finger moves, is because the electron next to it moved closer to it. And when it moved closer to it, more ping pong ball bounces, that pushed it, right? It got pushed where it is. It didn't just go there. It had to be pushed there. So there's always a force. And it's just really about the balance. So when the balance is even, then the thing stays where it is. When the balance is uneven, it moves. That's the simple rule. Let's see what the replies were. Oh, so the, uh, this guy actually responded to a comment. Here we go. No resultant force applied on it, yes. So I think this is just totally wrong. Um, the force is always there, it always exists, and you have to account for it. Um, and that's why electrons do lose those, their momentum, is because they are flying into force. And protons lose their momentum, is because they are flying against the force. Um, the force is always around us, everything is being pushed 
by it constantly and all you can change is the wind direction so if the wind is coming 50 miles an hour from this direction and 50 miles an hour from this direction I don't move everything's just fine I don't even feel a thing right theoretically um, but that doesn't mean there's no force there's plenty of force it's just that it's even in other words, if there was no force applied to an object, then it will not change speed or direction. So again, there's no, you can't avoid the force. So there's always a force. Nothing is existing with no pressure. It's just a matter of, you can increase the pressure. That's what gravity does. By clumping things closer together, it creates more pressure. And that's what makes things blow up and do all that kind of crap is the increase in the pressure um, but you can never decrease the pressure to nothing because even if you create a perfect location in space far far away from all other influences that could possibly be affecting you with pressure um, the, the fact is that's that environment is going to make you into a little round ball that's what it's going to try to do is crush you into a little ball because you're being hit by force and if there's no other object to take away a little bit of the force and create gravity, okay, then you won't move in any direction, but you'll still be under a, a tremendous amount of pressure. I mean, if there's nothing, no other junk in the universe, I just put one sun in the universe, that one sun is going to stay round. <laughs> it's going to feel its pressure. Um, you know, anyway. And... Let's see, uh, you can think about driving a car. Here it goes again. It takes a lot of power to get the car to accelerate. No, it takes power to change, okay, the, the bias of force that's in all of your atoms. So all of your atoms have built into them a bias in the direction that you happen to be moving now. Earth is going this way, the planet through the solar system, the solar system moving through the galaxy. There's a bias inside of all of us right now in our atoms. And when I attempt to move me, then I'm ha changing that bias in some subtle way. So every single nuclear bit has to have the arrangement of all of its bits changed to be pointing in the direction of the new bias. So their, their net um, ex their net motion, the net motion has to be in the new direction. When you add up all the fish in the school, they add up to, we're going that way. It's like even a processing circle. Again, the, the circle looks perfectly fine, but it has just a slight imbalance in it, and then it processes. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> all right, but once you are at the desired speed, then you only need enough force to counter the friction. Right, well, <clears throat> the desired speed, um, um, yeah, so once you give matter a velocity, a momentum, it maintains that momentum until some other force takes it away, and clearly friction is a way of bleeding the force out. So as I pointed out with the gyroscope or the bicycle wheel there the friction with the axle is what is going to absorb um, the eventually steal the velocity of the material that's moving in the circle and that friction is going to be dictated by gravity and so the top of the axle is going to feel more friction than the bottom of the axle and therefore the axle is going to move in the opposite direction of the wheels turning because of that friction so it's just a way of transferring the force you're exchanging this way for that way <sighs> okay um, you can reduce the power of uh, the throttle. If the car was in a frictionless environment, there would be no opposing force to overcome. Right, but the argument would be, what if, that, what if the car was an electron instead? And you shot the electron into space. What happens to that electron? What's your theory? Um, so the force would be required to maintain the speed. 
so no force would be required. So that's the whole problem here. So I think a fundamental misunderstanding that these rules can't be applied to subnuclear bits and nuclear bits and then you know, atoms. There's uh, clearly it has to have a mechanism. You have to orient material bits in a certain way to take advantage of the only thing that has perpetual motion innately. So the only thing that has perpetual motion innately is the photon, is the uh, the magneton, the graviton, um, the force, the force bits, like the photon. You know, photons are just force at a frequency, cannonballs at a frequency. All right, magnetism is segregated cannonballs, red, blue, north, south, plus ones, minus ones, electron reflective, proton reflective. All right, um, and so that stuff has perpetual motion. You can't kill energy. You can't kill the momentum of a photon. You can't kill it. It goes forever. You put it into a system, it'll stay in the system until you let it go. You can account for every bit of it. It doesn't die. It doesn't get destroyed. And when a matter, a piece of big matter, looks like a photon in that it has perpetual motion, now it clearly can't move the speed of light, um, it can move at velocity, and it can maintain that velocity. And the only way it can maintain that velocity is it, at, in actual fact, has to hold inside of it more little bits that are going in the direction it's going. For the school of fish to move in a direction, more fish have to move in that direction than are moving this way or this way or any other way. More of them have to be going that way if the fish move all the same speed. All right, uh, Scott Plummer. Then the car strikes something. What do you call the force that the car strikes an object with? See, that's the whole point, right? He's arguing that you can't think about gravity as uh, pressure per square inch or kilograms, or you can't think of it as a, a weight. But clearly it's a weight. So if you did take a car and you accelerate it, and then you put a big giant scale in front of the brick wall, you could measure the weight of the car in the direction of its momentum. Just like you're measuring our weight in gravity. So you could measure its weight, okay, in terms of um, relative to a mass in gravity. Okay, a kilogram on planet Earth in, in, in 10 meters per second per second gravity a kilogram of mass, so a clump of mass that we have decided is a kilogram because um, it will have a certain um, uh, pounds per square inch on a scale. And there will be a certain pounds per square inch relative to the mass of the car and how much movement you put into it. And it will come out, you can, you can equate it to a pressure on a scale. You can, you can, you can without breaking any um, logical rules, measure it as pressure. So momentum can be measured as pressure. Alright. <clears throat> Maybe I just have pneumocature wrong. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. The guy making the video is the one, again, using kind of sloppy jargon, playing with words like weight and speed, um, you know, when he's ridiculing somebody else for playing with the wrong words. Um, we usually talk about momentum. The moving car has momentum, which is just its mass times its velocity. Well, it's not just, right? So it says that it's a pretty significant thing to understand that, um, gravity affects the feather differently than it affects the hammer all right because it hits it, it imposes less force on the feather it's a practical fact it uses less 
it has to use more force to move the hammer. So you're absorbing more of the gravity force that's coming from the outside <laughs> to move the hammer than you have to move to move the, the feather. And that's why they move at the same speed is because much less force was used. There was less of a shadow uh, created. And, um, you know, and gravity applies that based on mass. So it will, it will always equalize because it's always just going to hit the atoms. So you don't have a, a many atoms and it's not going to hit too much stuff. You have more atoms, it hits more atoms. All right. Um, okay, the moving car has momentum, which is just its mass. Uh, this may help and explain the relationship of F. Uh, so he's uh, Khan Academy. Uh, yeah, sorry. Not very good videos there either. But that's good to save for later. We'll save it for later. Copy. Uh, okay. Ah, okay. Thanks for that. So I guess when we say the car hit that brick wall with a lot of force, we are using a colloquial definition of force, correct? Well, I mean, there, the <laughs> that's the whole problem. Physics doesn't have a definition because it doesn't know what a force is. It has no explanation. It has no understanding of the mechanism that propels electrons and protons. It doesn't understand it. It turns it into either some kind of bent space in the case of gravity, somehow bent space is pushing on the electrons and the protons, or this idiotic notion of a pull, which doesn't make any sense at all. And in the case of regular force mechanics, it says something like a virtual photon. Now, now and then, physicists will take an electron and an electron, and they'll draw that little squiggly line between them, kind of getting the idea that that's their repulsion, that their repulsion might be made of something. They're not just repulsive, like, I hate the camera. I'm going to run away from the camera for no reason. No, there's actual stuff between the electrons that are forcing them to not like each other. It's, it's They don't have a, you know, it's not just some kind of thought crime. I hate you, you hate me, our hate will drive us apart. That's not what's happening. It's physics, for fuck's sake. There's something physical happening, and people just keep ignoring it. All right, I'm sure I knew all this in my deep, dark past, but it's been a long time since college physics. So I don't think you've, you know, they haven't helped you as much as you think they have. Anyway, I think both are probably correct. Oh, wonderful, and we're more dualities. If the car hits a solid wall, then the mass of the car <coughs> is rapidly decelerated by the wall. Well, the point is, is this acceleration thing is just a transfer, and that's how it always has to be thought of, is a transfer. Gravity is an absorption of energy, okay? It's not going to go where it was going to go because I absorbed it, right? So the moon absorbs energy that would have hit the earth. That energy doesn't hit the earth because the moon absorbed it and moved towards the earth. And by moving towards the Earth, it absorbed energy that would have hit the Earth. That energy doesn't hit the Earth, so the Earth moves because it has more pressure on the back side than the front side, and it moves. Well, when it moves, it's absorbing energy again. It's absorbing photons. It's absorbing fish swimming the right way. That fish that's swimming the right way now will not hit the moon. All right, it gave back a fish going the wrong way, and uh, it moved. And when it did that, now the moon is saying, I'm in an imbalance, and it moves. And then the earth says, I'm in an imbalance, and it moves. And that's how it happens. It's inductive. <sighs> Seriously. I mean, their physics is so clueless on this subject. All right, anyway. And the well experiences an equal and opposite force acting. <sighs> Let's see. Um, and the wall experiences an equal and opposite force acting on it due to the impact of the car. Does that make sense? Well, again, and how does the force get impacted, right? This is sort of important because this is another point of where the momentum is now changing its direction, okay? Because there's a lot of direction changes that happen. So the kinetic balls does a really clear, the direction of the force stays consistent, 
okay it goes in at this angle and it comes out at this angle there's a clear um, uh, a clear precision to the memory so to speak not the memory what is the right word for it there's a conservation of the momentum and it travels right through but the car hitting the brick wall now it says it's not hitting a kinetic object it's not hitting a steel ball we can't make it do that you know we can see the momentum in different ways where we could measure it you know how far it pushes a steel ball up or something would be a nice way to measure it a scale of some kind but when it hits the wall what's going to happen is the wall the atoms aren't as uh, they don't have the same tightness they're not steel the atoms aren't bound tightly enough so now they're going to start breaking apart they're going to start flying apart and you're going to break all the molecular bonds and now the directions you're going to create are going to be directions that had nothing to do with the original direction of the force it's going to be in all kinds of other directions that stuff will fly and the question is all of that direction change appears to be perfectly free it doesn't technically absorb any real energy to change the direction okay another really tricky part of physics seriously that was like a light bulb going on in my head thanks so again it's like the circle you know you you could you can push something in a circle now if you do it in space the axle just keeps moving so half the momentum will go into going around and half the momentum will just go into moving the whole bicycle wheel so if there's no axle inside the bicycle wheel and you hit it in space what happens you know yeah the wheel might rotate I don't know how much and the wheel will move in the direction that you hit it um, so clearly the force in one direction will blend into different vectors um, but let's say you just you had a spinning wheel and you could just add spin to the wheel the, the kind of the idea is is I can put spin in this way you know, and I can take momentum out that way I can let it go that way so I could collect stuff hitting me in one direction and I could release it going in another direction theoretically without um, destroying any energy on the nuclear level. All right. Um, all right. So let's see. Uh, opposite force. Okay. Uh, it does. Seriously, that was like a light bulb going off in my head. Thanks. So I don't know. No light bulbs for me from this stuff. But anyway, brilliant. Glad it helped. So this guy's just saying, "Oh yeah, thank you. I'm you know great. I helped you." Uh, <laughs> now we all need is Baldy to show up and tell me that I got it all wrong. Well, it's not all wrong, <coughs> but I mean, you have to understand that this five minute video saying he's going to do acceleration in five minutes when he spent most of the time just correcting grammatical errors by a flat earther isn't doing acceleration, a very co kind of complex subject, any justice, right? So, you know, it's more complicated than that. Fuck, God damn it! I love this channel. You motherfucking genius, you. Keep up the damn good work. So again, it's just kind of a sloppy physics video. Great praise for... And again, doing what? Picking the rottenest fruit on the tree and squishing it. Ooh, I'm a superhero. I squished an insanely insipid idea. I mean, the very fact that they have to expend this much energy to debunk flat earth. I mean, just, you know, just contemplating, you know, <laughs> why would you bother going any further than saying what you actually believe that there's been a millions of person conspiracy for the last 100 years to hide from us, okay, the fact that the world is flat and that all of those smart people found some reason to cover up and pretend and make fake global images and to make fake weather maps and fake satellite data and fake everything. I mean, it's an insane conspiracy theory. That's the end of the subject right there. Done. I, I, you know, and, and like I said, the rest of it's just so obvious. I mean, you can't deny it. You can sit in a boat and you can watch stuff rise. Uh, you know, uh, uh, 
on the horizon. You can watch the top of the building come up first and then this part and then the, you can watch it happen. <sighs> Short but sweet. Yeah, but simple and uh, deceptive. Yep, it's like good idea. The basics we are these Muppets fall short. The basics are where these Muppets fall short. So all this little trivial name calling, blah, 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 blah. Oh, and then a guy named Gary. Huh, weird. Look at this name, though. A Golf Twiddler. I mean, that's just so freaking cute. Yo, I'll take Hitler's name and make fun of it. Because the Holocaust is funny. Although it wouldn't be surprised if even this level was a bit much for some. So again, it's, you know, he's, 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 yeah, he's thinking that this kind of cartoon portrayal, you know, this gross simplification, uh, you know, is real physics. No. All right. Oh, here's a whole pile of crap from some, I don't know what, how, you know, these names. Kiranetikus. From the bit of pink at the end, the key is not accelerating. Um, this is true. You know, it is accelerating. You just don't see it. Actual atoms in the key are being pushed by gravity down. And the scale is saying, I have, I'm under enough pressure. My springs are under pressure. I'm pressurized and that pressure is going to be equal to the pressure you're pushing down and so you're not really going to be able to push much down you can push a little tiny molecule worth and I'm going to push back and so the key is bouncing on the scale technically it's bouncing and so the heavier the gravity you're in the tighter that little bounce and if you think about bouncing right? It's like the basketball player when he's going down the court. The basketball player could be going 10 miles an hour. The basketball, because it's bouncing in this, you know, this manner, up and down, the ball's velocity is probably 50 miles an hour in terms of how much total distance it travels in the same amount of time. So when you're in heavy gravity, you're being accelerated. Uh, you're being your velocity is much higher than your apparent velocity. Your real velocity, in terms of how fast your molecules have to move up and down, jittering. Okay, because of the constant acceleration and deacceleration, your real velocity is much much higher. That's why, ah, we're the ones being time dilated here on Earth and the satellites are moving too slow. In fact, <laughs> they don't have to adjust the clocks in the satellite. They have to adjust our clock. Our, we're the ones with the broken clock. We're the ones with more time dilation. The clocks on the ground are the ones moving too fast. All right, from the bit uh, okay whatever this is true but not for the reason PW thinks the funny thing is that a scale doesn't actually measure the force of gravity uh, <laughs> news to me what really happens is that you have two forces involved well you really don't in the sense that the one force is the imbalance and the other is the thing saying I don't accept imbalances I, I have a cushion so it's like you trying to alter the voltage of the ground by shoving you know two minutes of 10,000 volts into the ground well the ground can absorb that without even trying um, so all you're gonna do is is change the net ground by a tiny tiny bit you're not gonna be able to absorb 10,000 volts back out of the ground um, gravity pulling down some sort of oh I love this answer right so, so so they're mocking the the other people's theory and this is how some sort of counterforce exerted by the scale itself like a spring well it is actually a spring in a lot of scales you know uh, 
mechanical scales they actually have a spring in them um, you know the digital ones use a little different mechanism um, you know a little photo uh, you know, photo uh, blah 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 they, they just measure a, a change in how much light gets through but it's, they still have to create a physical resistance um, the more compressed the spring the stronger the force um, and, and yeah and, and again all that is is the more the pressure so you're just moving the pressure the pressure comes in the thing can either resist the pressure or it is collapsed by the pressure so you're just saying what's the point where it stops absorbing any new pressure and that's all you're finding is where's the point where it will not absorb any more pressure and it will resist fight back all right at some point these forces will balance out and reach equilibrium yes since the total force is now zero the object on the scale doesn't move right so it's always going to seek balance um, it's always going to tend towards it now that's important here is to realize that the scale does not again if the universe you know half the universe moves this way the other half has to move the other way I mean it, it's all you're always stuck with the original circumstance what you would argue is with equilibrium and it sort of is obvious that's what it has to be or things wouldn't go spherical so the the native state is <coughs> balance uh, so let's see um, now that's important here to realize that the scale does not measure gravity itself it's directly being the force is directly being transferred into the scale so by the scale stopping that means that the scale is jittering so that means that the force hits it it pushes back it hits it it pushes back so it's constantly sampling it's the force is going into the scale to compress the atoms in the scale I mean it's creating more pressure in those atoms so to say it's not it's it's actually the force goes right into them <clears throat> but then let's see now it's important that the scale does not measure gravity itself but the magnitude of the counter force I, I mean I, I'd, I'd say that's um, just playing a word game uh, to say it's measuring the magnitude of the counter force it's it's measuring the pressure and the pressure was put upon it by putting the mass on top of it that's moving that's accelerating it's why it gives a larger reading when you press down on it or squeeze it. It's a larger reading because you're able to apply more force than the force of gravity on a key. Or why you should get a reading when you put it on the side and press against it. And again, so I'm just saying, to, to say it's not measuring gravity, it's measuring the force created by gravity. It's a real force, just the same as the force going sideways. All the forces are the same. All Einstein said it. I mean, acceleration is acceleration. You can't sit there and say it's uh, it's measuring acceleration going this way, but it's not measuring acceleration going this way caused by gravity. It's the same thing. It's just in the manufacture I've calibrated the thing so that the readings on the display match the weight of objects in your location objects in your location by doing so you can use it as it <coughs> as if it measures weight or mass but in the end what's it doing is telling you the counter force needed so uh, yeah again I, I think that's just semantics oh and before anyone gets the idea that this confirms that gravity can't be measured no it doesn't mean that at all there are other ways to measure mass and acceleration no there really aren't you're always going to have to put a brick wall in the way and it's rather obvious I mean you're always going to have to steal it by touching it and by touching it you're going to absorb the force and you're just measuring how much force did I absorb over a period of time you have to sample it to measure it okay and it's rather obvious that the force exists that is proportional to the mass and we call that force gravity Uh, yeah, well, I, I mean, I so theoretically, you could measure it by measuring how fast it falls, I suppose, right? That would be touching it the least. Um, what I'm saying is, but well, that's not going to give you the that's not going to give you the momentum reading. What I'm saying is that I mean, to measure its momentum, you're going to have to sample it. You're going to have to steal some of its momentum. 
What I'm saying is that you can't really measure any force or physical property directly. Well, I think you can. I think photons are pretty directly measured. Um, if you call hitting an electron a, a direct measurement, um, that's that's you know, I think that's pretty direct. All you can do is measure how much of it affects something's position or size. Yeah, you can't sample a force. There's no way to sample a force. You can't sample a photon. You have to completely absorb it and say, ah, oh, that was a photon. And you can tie that something to a physical property. In a mercury thermometer, for example, you're not really measuring temperature. You're measuring how much it expands with temperature. Well, again, isn't that the same thing? You're measuring the pressure created, which is the energy. The energy had to go into the thermometer. The thermometer is absorbing. It's sampling the environment. It's saying, give me some of your momentum. Clearly, the thing you're measuring the temperature of gets colder when you put the thermometer in. If the thermometer is reading 60 degrees and you put it in something that's 80 degrees, you're stealing some of the energy from the thing that's 80 degrees to measure its temperature. For the most part, the only force involved would be the force you're actually interested in. If not, then it would be a useless tool. It just means that you have to understand the operating conditions. And again, I don't know whether you understand the actual operating conditions. What's happening to each physical atom in the process? Um, which flat earthers never do. I don't think conventional physics ever really gets to the real conditions. You don't have an understanding of force. You have nothing. You have bent space saying, move atoms, move electrons, move protons, I command you. I am the sun. I command you to move. That's your fucking theory. And you're telling me that's not as silly as flat earth? I think it's just as silly. All right. Very much like all your content in whatever form, please keep them coming. So all of this content is trivial. Okay. So let's uh, watch for the pilot. It's just, nobody's called like person who makes logical comments. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a great... I wish there was somebody who did that. Okay, I've been arguing this with friends for a while. They say it's no scientific unit called deceleration. All right, so there really isn't, okay. You know, I, I mean, technically it's just change, but I mean, we clearly made it into a positive and negative number, just like we made temperature into a positive and negative number in many cases. So in some specific cases, we do this Kelvin thing or something, and we'll just say, well, yeah, it's all positive numbers. There's no such thing as a negative Kelvin or something. Um, and uh, so you just say, yes, you have a scale that goes from zero to some positive number. But clearly, for many circumstances, because we're the little Earth people in the little special location, um, um, you know, with the special little liquid water temperature thing, uh, you know, we have decided to create this, you know, more or less than what we have. And we've assumed that what we have is the, the zero and everything less is minus and everything plus is plus. So, um, you know, I, it's a point worth making. I mean, acceleration is kind of a crappy word, okay, because it does, look, it was built by people who didn't really understand, so they were talking about everything from a zero state to getting it to a positive state, and the fact that you had to accelerate to get from not moving to moving. So that's what they did. Um, and the real thing, as Newton would point out, is more complicated because the thing was already moving before you changed its movement. And so you've changed its movement. You didn't give it movement. <laughs> you know. And so it maybe should be called change relation or change relation. And it doesn't matter if the object's getting faster or slower. Your state of acceleration is a change in speed over time. So even if the change is to slow down, the change is absolute, therefore acceleration can never be negative. Um, please either confirm that or... Um, uh, all right, so, so acceleration can never be negative. Uh, see, see the, the only danger in that is that clearly it's dimensional. All right, I mean, it's a vector in the three dimensions, but clearly each element has a 
positive and negative side in the sense that a forward, back, left, right, up, down. Now there's no way to deny that the dimensions always have to go through the center of gravity. And so, you know, you have to concede that the concept of taking away a bias in a direction and coming back to a neutral is a rational uh, argument to make. That, you know, so in a sense, you, you sort of have to keep the idea of that because balance is what you're really talking about balance to the center and velocity is just a change in that balance to the center so if you're moving in a direction you're moving in that direction because you have imbalances that add up to that vector your circle to your center is skewed and therefore you move in a direction based on that skew all right <clears throat> Um, please either confirm. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I will say that you're wrong. Explain, okay, so I'm going to say that you're wrong, and my explanation is, is that um, the vectors of momentum are relative to a center of mass. And in that sense, you really can't escape up, down, left, right, forward, back as being opposites. And therefore, you have to need, you have to be able to understand them as adding and subtracting from a dimensional direction. Ah, we have replies. Okay, Chris A. Acceleration can be in any direction. Well, duh. Acceleration opposed to a direction of travel slows you down. Yeah, that's just too simple. That doesn't really get to the point he's making. Uh, Chris A. Thank you. <laughs> you thank the guy. That's pretty amazing. Oh, that's really amazing. I mean, obviously, the direction of your acceleration, as I just pointed out, will always be a vector relative to the center of your mass. So you can't escape that. Uh, this channel is literally Baldi's Basics, and Flat Earthers get spanked hard. So again, just more of this. Wow, we're so powerful. We debunked an insanely insipid theory. Wow, you're heroes. Wow. Your, your, your science is just so brilliant. Not really. So that is Pootius. Pootis 13. Marvin Karawinski or something. So at least it's a real person. Please fix F equals M times A on the whiteboard. Well, you can't really do that. And use lowercase a for acceleration, and don't use x for multiplication. Yeah, it was kind of you know messy, um, whatever you call the semantics of formalization. It looks too much like a cross product, right? For a physicist in me, oh, he's a physicist. Maybe I'll email him. This departure from conventional notation is unwholesome. Well, it does just add to the mess of. Um, noise <coughs> to signal just kind of breaks the noise to signal ratio in the key on balance scenario the key is p being pulled down by gravity so you get pulled down it's just kind of a funny idea to me it's just funny with a force mj is pulled down by what little ropes tied to the key <laughs> i mean sun you know the, the earth is pulling with these little ropes pulling the key down with a force mg um but the balance is exerting an equal and opposite force upwards. So the G and the MG, really, the, the gravitational constant really just has to do with the density of the gravity. It's just telling you how thick is the water that's pushing the boat. <laughs> you know, or let's see, what's a good way to say it? Um, how much sand is being pushed by the sand blaster? And so how much will it push stuff that's in the flow? But that's all the G constant really is. It's just giving you a density of the, the force. Um, upward so that the net force on the key is zero. Yes. Um, it, it's exerting an equal and opposite force, though, only when it gets to the point okay, where it can't absorb any more pressure. So you're pressurizing something to the same pressure as the weight you're putting on it. So it has lower pressure to start with, 
you put something on it, you increase its pressure, and there's a point where you've equaled the pressure, which is essentially balancing the scale. I mean, it'd be better to think of scales as maybe the arm thing on a pivot, you know, just so you really get what you're measuring. I mean, you're really just ex you're really just showing that you have a force going down this way, and if I put a weight on this over here, you have to lift that weight against the, a force that's equal. I think this point would be a, would add value to the presentation. Let's see what he said here. The key. When I pull down with gravity with a force mg, but the balance is exerting an equal and opposite force upward so that the net force on the key is zero. So I think this point would add value to the presentation that there are two forces acting on the key. Well, I think the better example would be to say, let's start measuring things with a balancing scale because then you can see the direct relationship that for this thing to go down, the other thing has to go up. And it ain't going to go up if they're equal masses. like the concept, but this is probably my weak understanding. I'd like another maybe 30 seconds to finish explaining the acceleration equation. So you think you can do that in 30 second bids, Whatever that is. SC second bids. As whilst I followed what you said, I sat on the bus still trying to think if I know how to calculate acceleration or not. Yeah, well, those, that's the tricky part, right? Because you didn't really get into the fact that acceleration isn't a one-to-one -one relationship. It depends on the material and how you're moving it, how much of the force will be realized in actual movement of the object you want to move versus movement of the atmosphere in all kinds of directions. So there's a certain efficiency equation to, say, the rocket engine of the space shuttle. There's a certain amount of the force that actually gets pushed into the shuttle as an equal and opposite reaction versus how much energy goes in directions that don't have anything to do with moving the shuttle. It just ends up moving a bunch of atmosphere in a bunch of other directions. Uh, is it if the car does 10 meters divided by 10 seconds, divided by 10 seconds, the number I'm left with is the rate of acceleration. Uh, like I said, I don't think there's any standard. You really have to go material to material or thing you're trying to move. So, and how much you have to, dis you have to f account for the places where you're losing the energy. So it's kind of easy with the kinetic ball example because there isn't too many places you're losing energy. I mean, there, you're creating some sound, so you know that some energy was lost to vibrations in the atmosphere so you can figure out some of the losses but in the system you're always going to have some losses now again I would argue that the kinetic balls isn't really a very good description of acceleration even though the ball at the end clearly goes from zero to some speed but it doesn't do it through accelerating it does it through a more direct transfer of momentum in a form more like electricity than um, blowing on it <laughs> yeah. The arrogance, and so, you know, coming from you people, I mean, you're pretty arrogant. And, but yes, the flat earthers are stupid, and they are arrogant, but so are you. The arrogance of flat earth is quite amazing, I must say. I swear I'm yet to come across one that has at least an eighth grade understanding of science. So, just ad hominem attack, not much value in that at all. Um, again, I would argue that you have notions in your head of reality that, in my opinion, by fair appearance, seems just as wacky. Okay, the magical, you know, come to me, uh, bent space force. Might as well just be angels, might as well be gremlins your magical dark matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just invented this invisible man uh, to push things around. But, you know, and that's all it sounds like, the magical matter that we can't see. Yes, it has all the properties of matter except all the ones that would give it away. We only want the gravity. We don't want any of the other effects. So we'll just make it invisible, but it still has hands to move things. I mean, it's that isn't uh, silly. Ah, look, you bald-headed fuck. 
uh, what you gonna prove the globe when you gonna prove the globe so again I just you know I, it can be proven by like I said I just show you the satellite data I mean the images are just beautiful now if you're saying that somebody went to all that trouble to create a fake image and they did it to, to what to fool us so we don't know the world is flat. They really know it's flat and they want to keep it a secret. And I'm supposed to think that's a logical theory? You crazy fuck. In Rem he calls himself, but he's a little hooded weirdo, so. You got numbers they give you, let us observe you, make them work, bitch boy. Clever. Foul language, check. Name calling, check. And that's all. Check. Well, again, name calling is what you people do all over the place, so, you know. Let's see. Fuck off, bitch boy. So, I mean, obviously this guy has no interest in defending a theory. He's just trolling. I mean, jeez. Fuck off, bitch boy. Show the measured and recorded results with points of interest so the data can be reviewed and scrutinized. Oh, wait. You can't, dumb fuck. Because the curve and the motion have never been measured and recorded. Uh, what, no one ever shot a cannonball? So if you think you're on a spinning ball, prove it. Um, the ones is not on, uh, the onus is not on us. We observe and record reality, you stupid ball is ball sucking bitch. I mean, really, this is just, you know, just a troll. Now, I don't know why, you know, humans find this necessary. I mean, you know, why, why does this guy live? What does he live for? Just to be a jerk? I mean, I'm going to be the biggest jerk ever because being a jerk is an accomplishment. Uh, I mean, you just wonder. Uh, so, Wolfie620, come on, you dog. So, I don't know what that is. Let's see, videos. So he, these are other people's videos, I guess, that he re-uploaded. I don't know. Reality speaks for itself. I'm no idiot fools. You look a little bit insane, okay? So you might not be an idiot, but you look fucking insane. What do you have, boy? What do you have, boy? <laughs> Who is this guy? Crazy. So these people really are crazy. I mean, you can just see the psychosis in this guy's eyes. I mean, he is way out there. Um, so, very scary. Alright, anyway, so. But yes. The heliocentric lie. Yes, continue to destroy it. <laughs> oh. It's a little disturbing that, you know, his hair like mine. It's a little bit disturbing. Damn. Oh well, shit happens. So at least his more recent videos, he's got a haircut, so it's really ruined his looks. Good, looks a lot crazier. I mean that image is just. I be crazy man. So anyway. So yeah, so they they're all proud of themselves because they're. They're making fun of retards, uh, essentially. All right, this has probably gone on way long enough. Um, yeah, I think there's some value in it. I mean, there's a, these are all interesting subjects, but I really have to find you know I have to find some of these people who are willing to um, argue that they have this great physics model and they know what they're they know how the world works, and get them to um, make the mistakes you know, that the flat earthers make. Let's see them defend their nonsense, you know, when they're under some pressure. Yeah. Let me put the pressure on them to say something rational about their bent space. <laughs> anyway. All right, so, oh, you know, here it is. I just saw a little NASA conspiracy. But surely you know that acceleration is a NASA conspiracy. Well, anyway. I mean, the point is, is that well, there's there's just so much data now. You know, the evidence is overwhelming. Anybody who says it's a mass conspiracy, again, millions of people. My father worked 
at Allied Chemical. He worked on uh, you know, manipulating titanium to make rocket engine cones, you know, to be able to mill them. Because it's you know, really tricky business. Um, <laughs> you know, all of these people just engaged in some conspiracy to fool us. I mean, it's just a silly idea. Silly. No, it's not even silly. It's insanely silly. All right, and that's the end of the subject, really. I mean, that's just too preposterous a theory. A, a conspiracy theory that massive, and not one person in that huge conspiracy ever took their cell phone and took pictures of the, the fake maps, weather maps, the fake ones that accurately predict the weather. I mean, pretty accurately predict storms three days away. Fairly accurately do that. <laughs> And they do it with fake images? No, I don't think they're fake images. I don't think it's fake data. The satellites are up there. They took the pictures. Game over. Flat Earth is a dead theory. Um, but here we are, arguing for absolutely no rational reason. So instead of these physics people defending their own wankery, we're wasting time talking about how stupid Flat Earthers are. Not, well, how insane they are, right? Because they really aren't stupid. They have to be crazy. You you don't believe in flat Earth unless you you don't believe in anything rational. You have to be an irrational. You're probably eating your own poo. Probably. All right, that's way more than enough. So, if you watched it, thank you. <laughs> I suppose. Um, yeah, I don't know what the, you know, like I said, the, the value is marginal. Um, but you have a choice. You can watch videos or you don't watch videos. I mean, I, I, you know, I can't guarantee you value. Sorry, I'd like to, but I just can't. Uh, because what's valuable changes for each individual, you know. Every individual is sort of seeking something different. So, you know, it's very hard for me to tailor the video to your specific interest. I mean, obviously, if you're watching any of these videos, you have some interest in what I'm saying or what I'm talking about. And I would like to make every video that would just be on your subjects you like, but can't really do that.